that's definitely your seed. And as a non-traditional student, you're going to have to answer, why now? Ask Dr. Gray pre-med Q&A sponsored by Blueprint MCAT Prep. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. What can I help you with? Um, so, uh, Dr. Gray, thank you for taking my call. And uh, I have a couple of questions with regards to um, activities uh, that I'm hoping you can help me to um, categorize them. Okay. Um, so, the first question I have is uh, I'm currently a clinical project manager. Um, so I'm wondering how um, how I should go around, uh, you know, categorize uh, these um, activities. Okay. I know it's not research. Uh, on one of your uh, um, call, I asked the questions, and I know it's not research now. But can I categorize it as maybe leadership, or uh, I'm I'm not sure how to to go about. Um, so let's let's dive into what exactly you're doing. So just general for everyone watching or listening to this. Right, categorizing things, it's hard to do just based on the title alone. So what specifically are you doing day in and day out? Right. So basically, I'm managing several clinical trials, uh, phase one, two, three. And specifically, I managed um, everything with the trial with regards to imaging. So most of my trials are oncology study. Okay. And uh, what we do is we receive imaging scans from uh, different clinical sites from patients. Okay. And uh, my job is to make sure that everything is set up in our system to receive the imaging and assign these imaging to the radiologist okay. to perform the reads. And then um, just basically manage the workflow and contact act as a point of contact between the pharmaceutical clients and my yeah. team. Um, and I also do a lot of trainings with the sites and answer questions okay. uh, and solving issues with the clinical sites. Okay. Um, so I am wondering how can I categorize these activities? So um, as we talked about previously, I think it was uh, Ask the Dean, wasn't it, that that question was uh, asked on? Yes. I um, thought it was research. I asked if it can be categorized as yeah. research, but... Yeah, probably not research because you're not the the one who is setting up what the trial looks like. You're not the one who's interpreting data, um, doing any of the data gathering kind of things. You're you Actually, are you you. It sounds like well, data gathering in terms of you're taking the stuff and then giving it to the people, but not in terms of it doesn't sound like where you're actually analyzing the data, inputting it into a system, trying to come to conclusions on your own. You're just kind of a, the, the quote unquote middleman um, who, who's helping people get the information they need to help make decisions for the study. Is that correct? Yes, I think that's, that sounds about right. Yeah. But I do um, gathering data and make um, analysis, providing it to the pharmaceutical company or okay. sponsor uh, with regards to like patient status and um, site status. Um, so I'm um, yeah, I'm not sure how. This I, I I think really where the line comes is, are you are you taking data? and putting it into a system and pushing it off to the next person? Or are you taking data, putting it into a system, analyzing it, looking at it, making conclusions on next steps that potentially may be needed for research purposes? Now, it's, it's hard because where you're at in, in a clinical trial position, a lot of those decisions are already made and you're the one that goes, well, okay, this happened, this happened, this happened, this is the next thing that's supposed to happen. That Maybe that's what you're doing, quote-unquote, analyzing information. Again, I don't know if I would call that research. Um, You are doing a job uh, that involves touching a lot of individual people in and around research, which is very interesting. Would I call it leadership? I don't know. Are you a leader? Are you leading people? I do have a team that um, works for me okay. and helping me managing uh, these trials. Okay. Why wouldn't you want to just put it under paid employment, non-medical clinical, and then 
in the description, talk about kind of what your role is, talk about the leadership in there, managing people, maybe make it a most meaningful, if, if that's what it is to you, uh, and put it there. Right. Yeah, I guess I, I guess I could do that. I was just wondering if, uh, if it's like a mix of um, different things or yeah, yeah I, what you said totally makes sense. I think it's probably better to be categorized as employment and then I can provide like more explanation uh, of what I'm doing with the job um, and things like that. Yeah, sounds like a great job. Yeah, I, I I actually liked it, and uh, I get, I get to see a lot of patient scans. <laughs> so um, okay, what else? Yeah. Uh, so uh, the next question I have is: so I participate in like a um, a competition. Uh, it's called it's by uh, farmer farmer times. The competition is uh, clinical researcher of the year. And I got the finalists in the uh, in the project management um, category. Okay. So uh, I'm wondering um, if it's beneficial to even mentioning this at all. Of course. Why wouldn't it be? Right. Yeah. And would it, it be like extracurricular or? It would be under awards, honors, recognitions. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I'm also wondering if it's. Uh, can be counted as research because I had to write like an essays and that essay got me to the final round. So it's um, it's a it's an award for the job that we just talked about, correct? Um, no, actually, it's like um, it's like a competition for the whole Americas regions. I know, so but it's it's for your job that you do. Yes, in right. order to participate, I have to be um, working for like a pharmaceutical company. Correct for yeah. the for the job that we just talked about that we said wasn't research. Yes. So your award wouldn't be research. It's organized by the same company. It's organized by a different company. I, I got that. I got that. Yeah. But your your the award doesn't turn into research. Your job isn't research. The award isn't research either. Right. Okay. Why? Let, let me take a step back. Why are you so interested in in research on your application? Seems like you're <laughs> you're trying to fit all of these different things into research where they don't fit. Why are you trying to do that? I guess the reason is because um, I honestly I am a non trad, okay. um, so I do not have a lot of ex research experience. Okay. So I guess I'm just trying to f see is there any way I can you know. Uh, include it in somewhere, but yeah, <laughs> what you said makes sense. Yeah, I actually got an, uh, a new like opportunity to work at the Veteran Affair as a, um, a clinic cl clinical research associate. Okay, um, so that's gonna be both research and uh, clinical experience. Okay, so I'm very excited for that, but I haven't started it yet. Okay, that's so, fine. Yeah. I I think students are so concerned about checking all the boxes, which is what you're doing. Uh, that you're trying to fit a square peg through a round hole, right? So just because you wrote an essay for this award doesn't make it research. So no, the answer is no, that's not research. <laughs> um, categorize yeah. it under honors, uh, awards, and recognitions. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. Thank you. What else? Um, another question I have, I think it's kind of like interesting to think about um, because I recently read a, um, a research about how your name kind of like affect the opportunity that you are going to be landing an interview. Yep. And I've, I've seen that saying, research. Yes. I'm wondering what is your thought on how this applied to medical school or is not even relevant at all? Um, I don't think the research was specifically around medical school admissions. It was more job hiring. And, and for those of you um, uh, who don't know the research, I learned about it through Freakonomics because they like talking about that kind of stuff. I don't know if that's where you heard about the research. But they, they looked at names and how names affect uh, hiring options. And so uh, obviously we know in the African-American community – the the names are not as standard or typical as um, as white Christian names and and so if a hiring person at a, a, a job or or at a medical school potentially sees an abnormal quote unquote abnormal name come across 
that person is less likely to be invited for an interview and be hired, unfortunately. And so there's this kind of racial kind of stigma associated with names to people and those people aren't hired. So the question you're asking is how does that affect medical school admissions? I don't know. Um, we, we would have to do some research and see. At the end of the day, people are people. People run this process and they have their own biases and racism and uh, unfortunately all of that other stuff that's out in the working world as well. And that definitely could carry over into medical school admissions. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. Yeah. What else? One, one interesting thing, right, to add on to medical school admissions that we don't necessarily get with job applications on, on the medical school application, you're putting your race and ethnicity on the application. Um, and so that's typically illegal in a, in a job application. Um, it's for um, kind of uh, affirmative action type um, uh, application processes for medical schools, which I think we need. Uh, and so that, that adds a little bit of, of other information kind of above and beyond what a name may say. Any other questions? Um, I think the last question I have is about the personal statement. Okay. So, um, you know, I, I was born and raised in Vietnam. Uh, and, you know, we were very poor when I was uh, a kid. So, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, I knew I always wanted to become a doctor someday after, you know, my uncle was diagnosed with cancer and, you know, a lot of things in my family. Uh, but we, I never really thought it would become a reality because we were just so poor. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, I got the chance to go to the U.S. to study. And uh, after graduate, I just, you know, uh, with a BA in economics, I just start to look for a job right away to have, uh, you know, money to support myself and to send to my family as well. So I never really thought about, you know, my uh, my dream to pursue my path yep. until I met someone who really inspired me. But he's not in like medical uh, field or anything, but he really gave me the courage and, uh, you know, and... Uh, and uh, to pursue my path. So I'm wondering if it's even relevant to mention um, the person who inspired me or I just should focus on uh, when I was, you know, what happened to my family and my uncle and that really uh, put the seed into my head of, you know, wanting to pursue the, um, the medical uh, path. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's definitely your seed. And as a non-traditional student, you're going to have to answer, why now? And so this person, whether or not it's specifically related to medicine, obviously gave you, gave you a kick to, to, to start to look at this again, to, to realize that it was possible. And so I, I think that should be, if not part of your personal statement, somewhere in your answer of why are you doing this now? Um, and you'll just have to see how it works with a personal statement. Yeah, I guess why I'm doing it now is because I have uh, saved up money after a while of working mm -hmm. uh, with my professional job. I'm able to save money. Uh, I'm very fortunate to have a job and was able to save up money. And uh, I, I feel like now is um, the right time for me to, to pursue this path. Well, that, that doesn't sound like the real answer, though. Because if I would have asked you before you met this person that kind of encouraged you to go back and do this, were you saving money so that you could go to medical school or you, were you just saving really. money? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Saving money anyway. <laughs> right. So you have to tell your truth. Don't, don't again, fit a square peg through a round hole and try to make it seem like you've been working to save money so that you could go to medical school. Cause that's not the truth. Right. I was just saving money anyway. Exactly. Yeah. And then meeting this person and getting inspired and uh, being encouraged, then that's that's when I really, you know, take a step back and say, okay, now you know I have the opportunity, I have the yes. the resources, so um, I'm going to pursue this. There's there's your answer. Okay. Now again, whether that comes out in a personal statement or somewhere else, it's gonna have to come out because that's that's your story and of why you're doing this. Right. Okay.
All right. Is yeah. that it? <laughs> yeah, I think that's all the question I have for now. <laughs> awesome. Well, good luck on your journey. Uh, you're a part of Application Academy. Can, can we talk okay. about how that's going? Do you like it? I love it. Yes, awesome. I really like the interaction and um, the presentation you give was really amazing. Um, and I feel like I get so much help and support and answers from, you know, the, all these burning questions that I have. And I feel like um, I feel like I have a more a clearer um, visions of what I want to do and clear plans of what I want to do in order to apply. So I think it's Great. like the best decisions uh, for me. <laughs> good, good. I'm glad. Um, let's talk about the MCAT real quick. The Especially for you, you don't have a science degree. You have a, a BA in economics, you said. Yeah. Um, how are you tackling the MCAT? So I'm studying for the MCAT right now. I have finished all my uh, pre, uh, pre-med pre classes. Okay. Um, so I have, I, I'm, I think I'm doing pretty okay with the classes. And okay. uh, I'm planning to take the MCAT at the end of uh, March. Uh, but to be honest, it's a little bit uh, challenging to study um, because, you know, of the job and of the volunteers activity that I'm doing as well. Yep. Um, so I'm really, really trying to uh, squeeze in all my time uh, to study and hopefully um, I will have a good score um, when I take the test in uh, March. Okay. And I'm taking it in Florida. <laughs> You're taking it in Florida outside of, it sounds like, not where you live currently. Why Florida? That's just what I was available? I wasn't able to find anything in, around Massachusetts. I'm from Massachusetts. Okay. I wasn't able to find anything. Um, wow. So I have to go to Florida to take it. Yeah. Okay. That's definitely a challenge. Um, blueprint full-length exams. Have you taken any? Are you planning on taking blueprint exams? Take, yeah, I haven't taken any uh, blueprint exam, but I think I will try to uh, do some practice uh, from now until my exam in uh, March uh, yeah. 26. Yeah. If you haven't yet, sign up for um, the free services or resources that Blueprint offers at blueprintprep.com. They have a free half-length diagnostic. Their, their full-length one exam is free, and that's the, the test that we're going over on the MCAT podcast right now, which is on the, our YouTube channel as well as the podcast. Um, and then you get access to their study planner as well to help you arrange life with how crazy it is with work and everything else. Um, so go check out all those free resources at blueprintprep.com. Yep, I'll definitely check it out. Thank you so much.